Hi everyone, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. I haven't said that in ages, but anyway, today we're going to be taking a look at four M.2 drives in RAID 0. So a classic beginning and a classic bit of TTLs doing this just because he wanted to know what was going on. So a little while ago on my Facebook page, I did post about the fact that I had one of these Asus Hyper M.2 X16 cards. It's basically an M.2 SSD RAID card with a 16 times PCI Express slot at the bottom. Most of them are eight times. So this gave us the ability to have all of the bandwidth for M.2 drives. Now, uh, you can get M.2 drives now that do 3,500 meg uh, reads and 3,200 writes, although there are new drives coming out um, left, right, and center. Sometimes you need to watch the 4K reads though to see the difference, like the big difference between the drives. Anyway, so I just literally got sent this, like it landed on my desk, there was no drivers for it, there was no guide, there was next to nothing on their website. It was just a case of, they are, something for you, you know, nice one. See you later. And that was it, they just sent it. So I got some drives and uh, then I was literally going out of my box trying to get them all working because you should be able to do it in the BIOS side of things rather than having to do like Windows and software RAID. And it turned out in the end that you had to, I took a deep breath, use Intel solid state drives and it was the, that was the way to get the iroc on the board working now when it does come to iroc it only works on x299 boards and there there is an iroc key on the board i've got the rampage extreme here when you use the iroc add-in key that is for everything other than raid zero so without the iroc key you can do raid zero which basically means you strip if there's one block of data you strip that out in between the uh, four drives and then that what that then means is you've got four drives all accessing the data at the same time uh, when you go on to the other raids like five six ten it gets a little bit more complicated i could spend a video just talking to you about that i'm personally a fan of raid six although i know there are people out there that can be banging their heads against the table and telling me to go zfs and linux and all that kind of stuff but we'll keep it on point it's about m.2 raid so what I needed to do was get the non-Intel drives out and put some Intel drives in. And that is where the 760s come in. These are the latest drives that Intel have brought out. We've got all the stickery stuffs going on. And I'll give you the part number. It's the 760p series. These are one terabyte each. And I've obviously got four of them. Uh, and I had to wait a little while because these come out a few months ago, but they only had the smaller models uh, available at the time. And I kind of wanted to uh, do something big. I didn't see the point in getting something like this and then sticking four 250s in it for a terabyte drive, when in reality, you could have just gone and bought yourself a terabyte drive. So it kind of wouldn't have got you anywhere. And yes, we can get two terabyte single drives now. I thought four terabytes was kind of a nice mix so it's something that we can't quite get to with m.2 yet uh, and also it should give us some rather big speed increases so four of those lovely beauties i had to beg borrow and steal and uh, then i had to wait a little while as well because when, when i was actually asking about them they were still in the they will be coming but they're not there yet and i think it was like six weeks or something i had to wait even for them to get to intel in the uk so we have the four drives and I got super excited because I was finally going to be able to get some massive, massive numbers. Now, when you do do this, you do have to go in and enable RAID in the BIOS. You also then have to go to some of the CPU settings and go into the RAID and you have to turn it all on. To be honest with you, um, it's, it, it's one of those jobs where you kind of have to kind of get in there and have a bit of a play around with it. But once you have found the area where you can set up your RAID, it's pretty much the only thing that, the only choices that you've really got is how many drives you want in it and then the block sizes. I stuck with a 512 block size for this, but I could go back and do loads more testing, but it just takes an absolute 
age. Uh, now the, uh, the M.2 card, you can fit four in, you don't have to run four. You can just run a single one. You do get a little fan at the back uh, and there is a switch at the back of this as well. So you can turn it off so you don't have to have it run. Some drives run hotter than others. I didn't particularly find any issues running these like this, let alone with the heat sink on. So if you've got a decently air cooled rig, the heat sink will um, really help you. If you're running you know, low on space or something like that, the fan, um, I was finding it was taking sort of like about six to 12 degrees off, depending on the drives. These didn't really get that hot. The ones that I used last time did, and it actually helped. Uh, and you do get little activity lights at the back as well. They're little, literally there's four green LEDs and when the drive's being accessed, they flash. It can look kind of cool. Um, this did make me think about the old uh, Zonar sound cards as well, by the way. It's roughly the same sort of size as the original Zonar that I had. Um, I even did start thinking of could I covered, co covered it with the Zonar cover, but it didn't fit. Um, although I would be tempted to, uh, if I wasn't going to be, uh, well, I was tempted to paint it. Let's put it that way. I think it needs to be white. It still may end up white. Giving you a little bit of information on the actual M.2 card itself as well. If you're going to be changing the drives, I know not a lot of people will be, but if you are going to be changing the drives a lot or deciding to pull the cover on and off, then go careful with the thermal pads. I'd probably get some spares if I was you as well. If you run into heat problems, don't forget you can get different uprated thermal pads as well. As long as you get for the same thickness, but to be honest with you, when you start changing the thermal pads, especially like when you're buying them from Amazon and stuff like that, they can get expensive really quick, especially when you need four. But anyway, we'll talk about the numbers. So we did the raid, and if you go to the OC3D website, there, is, uh, there are lots more tests. I did test a single drive, two, three, and four, which are the differences in the graphs, that, eight, or in some of the graphs that you can have a look. We've also put them in with our other solid state drive tests that we have done. But I can't stress enough that this is only some of the testing that we've done. The rest is on the OC3D website. Some benchmarks just don't like raid it's just the way it is some do love it and you can see some decent numbers there as well when it comes to real world sort of tests which is what a lot of people are going to kind of go absolutely crackers about that is one of those ones where i could give you some real world numbers but where i've never really done it on other ones it's not really going to be a lot of um uh, sense to us here and now but things might be changing so you never know what will be happening soon because i've actually got quite a lot of drives to do at the moment, madly. They've all seemed to have landed all at the same time. So if you've heard of a big launch, it's coming. Anyway, so Atto did actually see it quite well. And you can see with the Atto, this is just a graph for you to see the difference between one, two, three, and four. Atto showed scaling quite well. Not all programs did though, randomly. Some of them were actually faster with just one, but they're the ones that don't really understand what's going on with the RAID, but gladly, Atto does. Don't forget, you can go see loads more results as well. Crystal Disk Mark, anyway, Atto, we got over 10,000 megabytes a second on the four there for the uh, 64 meg read, which I thought was rather good, and then the uh, eight megabyte read did quite well as well. The writes down at 6K though, so the writes weren't doing quite as well. That was um, uh, come through again when we look, looked at Crystal Disk Mark 6, you get 10,000 at the top. Um, then when we went on to writes for um, Atto, you can see them, um, uh, sorry, um, writes the Crystal Disk Mark, you can see here we got about 6,000 again. Now that, that works in with our, um, our Atto test. So I wasn't, if I'm honest, I wasn't that impressed with the writes on this for four drives. Now that could be some uh, con controller delays um, and it could also be, when you think about that this is a CPU RAID, it also could be to do with that. It's definitely, essentially, yes, there is a lot more tests and I could probably spend an entire week just testing these drives, but what I'm doing now is I'm talking to people trying to work out whether it's um, benchmark limitations or whether it might be a, um, a RAID card kind of limitation, because there's really not a lot on this. This is pretty much like a hub. If you understand uh, like a network switch, 
that sort of thing. That's pretty much what this does. And this would be your ethernet cable and then these are your switches and it just allows them all to talk at the same time. Now, I don't know whether this needs, a because there is some chips and stuff on here, I don't know whether it needs a better controller or whether the throughput on this isn't that good, but questions are being asked. Now, the reason why you might think to yourself, why didn't you tell us later? These questions have got a kind of habit of taking ages to be answered. So what I'm hoping to do is give you something uh, interesting to talk to you about today. Let's face it, we've got four M.2 drives running at 10,000 meg a second. We used to think the 3.5 was amazing. So we got 10,000 meg a second uh, uh, with these, which I was just like, Whoa -hoo -hoo! imagine that as a scratch drive for your videos, yes. Anyway, um, and then I'm gonna carry on looking into it because this is something that I'm actually personally interested in because it's not your run of the mill sort of stuff. It's an overkill 3D scenario. And yes, you probably wouldn't want to be getting one of these and spending you know, thousands of dollars on one of these for yourself without some lucky or idiot having a play with it first. So that's hoping uh, what I'm gonna try and do for you. But the numbers I'm hoping will be interesting for you guys at home. And then if there is any more information that you like, like I said, you can go and have a look on the OC3D website, but stay tuned because we will be doing some more with this. You're probably gonna get a chance to see this in two builds at least, I would have said. Definitely two, because I've got this massive glass thing that looks like a slate that it might be going in in the not too distant future. Possibly, but we're going to be doing something really interesting in that and I'm probably going to get told off for even mentioning it because it is technically under NDA until the 10th of May. Anyway, so yeah, you can go and post about that because I do have one. We've got some more Atto tests here uh, and the, um, the Atto test, it did actually do uh, okay. You can see two actually performed worse than one, which was weird, um, but then the four did do quite well at the top. But if you pay attention to the uh, 16K results, you can see that they were a bit all over the place. Um, some of the benchmarks, like Crystal Disk Mark III, for example, because there are different iterations, uh, one did better than two and three and four, so that was one of the ones that didn't actually like RAID at all. So limitations with it is you've got to have Intel drives. Limitation is you've got to run it on an X299 platform. And the other thing that you kind of need to think about as well, because of the way that the Intel X299 platform works, you need one of the uh, CPUs with, or, with the 40 PCI Express lanes, because this is um, CPU based RAID. It's nothing to do with the chipset itself. So if this is a 16 times card and you've got a 16 times graphics card, which let's face it, you're gonna have, you're gonna need 32 lanes. And if you don't, then you're kind of limiting this straight out the bat. So you need one of the 40 lane CPUs um, and then you're gonna need uh, a, a, an Asus board as well. Asus board as well, why is that a limitation? Well, randomly, we did try it on a competitor board it didn't work at all. So it did, we didn't get any options to do the RAID or anything like that. Now I have tested this in Windows and we were getting maximum kind of reads at, with a Windows software RAID. So you can plug this into a board and um, without doing anything in the BIOS, you'll see four independent drives. If you then go into, like I said, in Windows, in Disk Manager, you can then RAID it in there. And we were getting around 7,000. Uh, mega second. That's how I managed to test the um, the normal M.2s before. So by going with the Intel ones and then being able to do it in the BIOS properly, you get a 3000 meg boost. You know, it really depends on whether you want to buy these drives or you don't. Would you really see the use of it? Well, you know, we're never going to know. I think though, personally, considering these should be doing over 3000 each, that um, 10 is good but I wouldn't be surprised if there was more that could be eked out, which is why I'm asking the questions. I don't know whether it might be something that can be fixed in a driver, or I don't know whether maybe this is the limitation and maybe we need to swap, swap it around that way. Um, so it's definitely something I'm going to be, when I get the time around the reviews that I'm doing, something that I'm gonna have a play with any questions underneath, I will be keeping an eye on. And what I'll also be doing is taking some notes about anything that I'm like, oh, that's a really good question and see if I can address it for you later on. But for the most part, what I want to do now is try and get down to the 
And this has been months in the making because I tested the original drives probably two, two and a half, maybe even three months ago. So it's been a long time in the um, making. So this is gonna go back into the kind of cooking pot and we'll see what pops up next. Or hopefully I'll put it on YouTube, but you never know, it might just pop up on the Tiny Tom Logan Facebook page. Only time will tell. Do you like these weird little kind of investigations that I do or do you just want me to stick to the normal reviews like I normally do? Let me know, there are more stuff coming. We've got SSDs coming, there are cases coming, we've got more boards coming. I do know we've got more Ryzen 2 coming because we're going to be doing the non-X stuff. I'm gonna be overclocking the bejesus out of those, all being well. So stay tuned, oh, there's lots of coolers as well. I've got some um, uh, good value coolers coming. I've also got some big daddy 360s coming, the AIO variety we've not really had an air cooler for ages. But anyway, this has been the tiniest of Logans and I'm hoping you enjoyed the video.